This video goes over the process of creating a clean render for an animation with minimal work on lighting and background. The first step is to make a new camera that's going to be dedicated to our final render shot. The easiest way to do this is to head up to view above the viewport and select create camera from view. This will automatically put you into the new camera. I recommend double clicking on it in the outliner and giving it a new name, something like render cam or shot cam. We should also turn on our resolution gate for this camera. We can find this with a little icon above the viewport. It's a blue dot with a gray rectangle around it. The gate mask should automatically turn on, but that's a little gray one next to it. Now in this new render cam, we need to frame our animation. Ensure that you look through your animation to make sure none of it escapes out of the shot and try to utilize as much of the resolution as possible. When you're happy with the shot, head up to the top here and look for this lock camera button. This will make sure that we don't lose this shot. Switch back to your regular perspective view using the panels menu here. Now we can work on our lighting and our ground plane. You may want to scale up your new shot cam just so you can see where it is in the scene. To create a simple backdrop and ground plane, we're just going to use a polygon plane primitive and we're just going to rotate it towards our new render cam. Then you're just going to take the edge in the background and extrude it multiple times to create a curve up above the camera shot. With this ground plane selected, press three on your keyboard and it will smooth out the mesh and create a nicer gradient for our backdrop. Switch back to our render cam through the panels menu again, just to ensure that everything is encapsulated by the backdrop. You may need to scale it out just like this. Next up, let's add a light to the scene. The easiest way is with an Arnold Lights Skydome light and we'll use a HDRI to drive the color and give us some interesting lighting. By default, the Skydome will have a flat white light. We can still do a test render at this point by just heading up to Arnold Render. Make sure to change the camera here in this dropdown to your render cam. This is just a good time to double check if your background is completely covered by the ground plane, as well as your mesh is looking fine in the render. We now need a HDRI to drive the light's color. Head over to polyhaven.com and you'll be able to select from a whole bunch here. You're just looking for the lighting. These are not a background. Select one you like and then click download in the top right. Once that's downloaded, make sure it goes in your source images folder of your project. Back in Maya in the attributes of the Skydome light, we want to drive the color value here with our HDRI. This is just like assigning textures and it should take you to your source images folder as long as your project is set. Doing another test render here, you should see your lighting is a little more dynamic now as it has that additional color from the HDRI. You can rotate this sky dome. That's the only way that you will affect the lighting. Moving it and scaling it will have no effect. Find a nice angle and change any intensity and exposure settings in the attributes if you need until you've got nice lighting that again shows off your model in a nice clean way. The next thing to do is add a better material to your ground plane. Hold right click over it and assign new material. Because we're using Arnold, we can use a standard surface here. In this new material, you can choose a color. I will choose something that's kind of pastel-y. That's not going to take away from your animated object, but something that adds a little bit of color to the scene, makes it a little more interesting. I'd also adjust the specular roughness value. You probably want something a bit more matte, so there's less reflected light and less blowout in the whole scene. With our visual look dev completed, we just have to now set up the render settings so that we can render out our full animation. To get to render settings, look at the top of your screen and look for this clapperboard with a blue cog on it. There's a few things to change in here. The first will be our image format. Make that TIFF or JPEG. Under that, we want to change our frame animation extension to one of them without a single frame. So usually just the one below. Then we can set our start and end frame here. This will be dependent on your animation. And then finally, we'll change the image size presets here to something that's a little bit higher. 720 is usually good, but you can go higher than that as well. One last thing before we start rendering, we may want to just up the samples on our lights. This will just get rid of a little bit of the grain that we're seeing here in the render at the moment. You can do this in your render settings as well, but the lights will give us a lot better result quite efficiently. You'll find the sample slider in the lights attributes. Increase it up to something like four or five you should notice less grain on your model, you can increase this more. Just be aware it will increase render times. Your animation should be ready to render now. Switch back to your render cam. Just double check everything's in order. Then head up to the top left of your screen and change this menu set here from modeling to rendering. This will make new menus appear at the top. 
we're going to go render and render sequence. Make sure to hit the options box. Double check it's the correct camera and also check this file directory here to make sure it's going to somewhere that you know. If everything looks good, hit render sequence at the bottom and your animation will start rendering. This will take a while and it's going to depend on what you're rendering and what resolution as well as things like samples as well. Once it's finished, your images will be outputted into the folder you've chosen. If you've set your project, it'll be in the images folder of the project. All you need to do now is composite these in some kind of video editing software. I'll just show you a quick example of how to do it in Premiere. Start by importing the image sequence, find where they exported to, just select the first one and make sure you tick this tiny little box just above file name that says image sequence. It'll bring it in as a movie clip then. Once you've imported the image sequence, right click on it, head to modify and interpret footage. You want to just make sure you change the frame rate here to 24 FPS so it matches your animation in Maya. Last thing to do is drag it over into a sequence. I'd recommend if you have a looping animation like mine, just duplicate it a few times so that you can have a longer animation that you can edit into something like a showreel later. Once you've got the animation looking great all together, you want to just export it out as an mp4. Make sure the format's H.264, choose the output name and location, and then just export it out. You should now have a nice clean rendered animation for use in something like a showreel.